So I thought after using Desmos and Tables for so many years with my students that I knew it all, but I was so wrong. Let me show you what I've learned, but I want to start back at the beginning. Let's go ahead and put a function in like f of x is equal to x plus 2. So I've got my line there, but I want a table that represents the points on this line or the solutions here. To do that, I'm gonna click on this edit list, the settings gear, so I'm gonna click on that. And then you've got a couple of options over here next to your function. You're gonna click on the create table and it changes your function into a table of values. Notice over here, it also gives you the points on the table on your line. So you can click on those to see what the coordinates are. Say you don't really care about what your function's doing at negative two, but you wanna know what your function is doing at say seven, you can type that right in, and then it gives you another value. You can even do things like 0.5. Notice how it is giving me those new values on the line as well. See this line right here? This line right here means that you can add another piece of your function. Maybe you're learning about algebra of functions and you wanna do f of x. Um, let's do uh, minus three. Maybe you want a different color. You can click and hold on the color circle and then you can change it to any color you want. You can change it to a different symbol. I don't know why you wouldn't want just the points. You can make your points bigger. So let's say that I want them to be 10 instead and I can even connect the dots with a line there. So lots and lots of options there. I'm gonna close out each of these because there are other ways that you can use tables in Desmos. Next, let's create a table from scratch. I've got an empty cell and I'm gonna click on that plus sign. And the plus sign gives me several different options, including that table. So it's automatically labeled my columns, X sub one and Y sub one. Let's say that we want our X values to be in increments of say two. So I'm gonna start by typing in negative two and then enter and then zero and then enter and take a look at guest that I wanted to next. So I can continue the pattern by just hitting enter to continue the pattern. Notice that they're all separated by two. And then I can just put in anything here that I want for my Y coordinate. So let's say that I want these to be in increments of one. It doesn't just fill those in because those are now our outputs. Now there's a lot of options that you've got with these values that you typed into your Y column. I'm gonna click on that circle next to Y1 and it gives me the same options that we saw before. I can change the color, I can change the format, I can add lines, but there's also this new addition that says drag. If I click on drag, it's going to let me move these points. Let me click off of this somewhere else. And I'm gonna pick on this point, which happens to be zero two. And I can go ahead and move this to another place. Notice how it's changing that in my table as well. I can move it over here. So just a really nice way to work with some points. Um, I can also change this into a function instead. I'm gonna get rid of that y1 value. Notice how it gets rid of all of the points. And I wanna go ahead and type in a relationship. So let's say that we want um, three times all of those x values. So I'm gonna go three times x, but I specifically want the data values in x sub one. So I'm gonna put in one right next to the x. It automatically subscripts and I've got three x sub one. I can do this again, say that I wanna take the cosine of these values and I can do cosine parentheses X. I want X sub one, so I'm gonna type in one to get those values as well. Now notice because it's also graphing these, I've got that little zoom fit magnifying glass. If I click on this, it's gonna do its best job to show me all of my points. Now the line continues to show up at the edge of my table, which means I can continue typing in more and more functions as I'm working with these values. 
Okay, but there's more. Let me get rid of this table. The last thing that I wanna show you is using data that you've already got. Maybe you found it on the internet, maybe you found it in your homework. I can take a data set. I am going to select all of this. This is just a random survey I gave my students. I'm just gonna click, hold, and drag through all of this. And then I'm gonna do a control C to copy. I happen to be on a PC. So I'm gonna do a control C to copy. And then back over to Desmos, I've got my cursor in an empty cell and I'm gonna paste. So I'm gonna do control V, V as in Victor. So control V and there are all of my data values. Now, lots of things that I can do with these data values. I can get to another empty cell here and I can do any of my functions. So say I go into my keypad, I click on functions and I wanna find the average of all of my Y values. Under statistics, I'm gonna choose mean. Those Y values, if I scroll up, I notice that those Ys are specifically Y sub one. So I can find the mean of Y, I type one, and it automatically subscripts those. I can also, let me get rid of this, I can also do a linear regression. And to learn how to do that, you're gonna watch this.